Ocular Albinism, directed by Jesse Conejo. Albinism is a disorder that has been around for many years. Ancient stories and myths have mentioned and described non-pigmented animals and humans. There are many myths that say people with albinism had the ability to read the future. In the 1600s, some African communities saw people with albinism as prominent people in society. Yet the common norm in most societies was that people with albinism were casted out, considered deformed, and sometimes even considered contagious. It has been recorded that people with albinism were commonly featured attractions in circus freak shows. Even today in Tanzania, people with albinism are being murdered. Their body parts are being used in witchcraft. The discovery of this disorder is accredited to a Portuguese man named Balthasar Telez. Telez was an explorer and historian. On one of his travels to Africa around 1660, he found white men amongst the indigenous people of Ethiopia and turned them albino. The de he derived the word albino from the Latin word albus, which means white. Albinism is not just a pan-ethnic disorder. In fact, albinism affects every genus of the animal kingdom. There are now two main known forms of albinism, which are categorized by their phenotypic effect, ocular albinism and oculocutaneous albinism. Ocular albinism, which is also known as the Nettleship Fall Syndrome, is the most common form of albinism. It occurs in one out of every 50,000 humans and it accounts for 10% of all forms of albinism. This large amount of people with ocular albinism is due to people passing down the gene. Ocular albinism is inherited in an X-linked autosomal recessive manner. The main phenotypic characteristic of ocular albinism are iris translumination and little to no loss of pigmentation in the skin and hair. Some people with ocular albinism may even have completely black hair and dark skin. Other characteristics of ocular albinism include severe visual impairment, refractive errors, misrouting of optic fibers, fundus hypopigmentation, involuntary eye movements, high sensitivity to light, and eyes that do not look in the same direction. At a microscopic level, albino patients show melanin macroglobules, or giant pigment molecules also called macromelanosomes, in the eyes and the skin. Despite having some of these giant pigment molecules, the size and number and shape of melanocytes in the skin, hair, and retinal pigmentations are still normal. Genetically, the main cause of ocular albinism is due to mutations in the GPR143 gene, which is also known as the OA1 gene. Ocular albinism genetically defers to oculocutaneous albinism because oculocutaneous albinism is mainly attributed to tyrosinase problems. The OA1 gene's loci is XP22.3 to 22.2. The OA1 gene is about 40 kb long and is organized into 9 exons. The OA1 gene encodes specifically for a G-protein coupled receptor of 404 amino acids long abbreviated GPCR. This GPCR, encoded by the OA1 gene, is only expressed in retinal and skin epithelium cells, and it controls the number and size of melanosomes produced. A specific ligand for the OA1 protein has not been identified. How the OA1 protein functions in healthy and ocular albino people is still unknown and under extensive research. There is not one specific mutation or specific combination of mutations in the OA1 gene that causes ocular albinism. Common mutations in the OA1 gene include missense mutations, intragenic deletions in the exons, single amino acid deletions, splice site mutations, and insertions that lead to frame shifts. There have also been some mutations which cause premature stop codons due to deletions in the exons, which severely alter the structure and function of the OA1 protein. Although the main cause of ocular albinism is due to mutations in the OA1 gene, in some cases, no mutations are found. Although it is not clear as to why not all ocular albino patients show mutations in the OA1 gene, scientists have led to believe that possible mutations outside of the coding region or in the non-coding region of the OA1 gene could attribute to ocular albinism as well. There are currently no treatments available that cure ocular albinism. There are tests in which parents that are potential carriers of the disease can have. A prenatal diagnosis of their male fetus can be done if they believe it has a 50% risk of having ocular albinism. Some parents who believe ocular albinism is a great burden will terminate the fetus and prevent passing down of the disease to other generations. 
Most, on the other hand, see the disability caused by ocular albinism not to be such a burden and will not even seek out the testing. Depending on the severity of the disease, people with ocular albinism can undergo surgeries available to correct some of the ocular defects that arise. There are some treatments under current research that may be available in the future. Identifying new ligand for the OA1 protein would allow for pharmaceutical products to test the protein and regulate its expression. Some scientists have considered gene therapy as a potential treatment in the future.